so far we have been talking about the local linear neighborhood of equilibrium points. That means, we had earlier seen that most of the dynamical system that we have modeled, they yielded nonlinear differential equations and then we say that we will first look at the equilibrium points. So, if this is the whole state space, we say that first we locate the equilibrium point for example, here and then we will take a local picture around that equilibrium point by taking the Jacobian matrix. So, you get a linear equation around that and then we had in the last few classes understood what happens in this local linear neighborhood. Today, we will take a global look and try to understand what happens elsewhere. That means, the character of the vector field that can happen elsewhere. But one thing is, is, is certain that uh, in many textbooks you will find that this local linear neighborhood is all that is dealt with. That means, uh, normally there are many textbooks especially in control theory that deal with equations of this form x dot is equal to a x plus b u and that is all. Now, it is important for us to realize that this is always a local approximation. And there have been problems you have dealt with where the equations obtained were linear in nature, were not. Hmm? There were cases, for example, take this circuit, you have got this battery, you have got this inductance, you have got capacitance and say a resistance. Now, if you obtain the differential equation, it will be a linear set of differential equation. Why? Because there also a process of linearization has gone in. No system in nature or in engineering can be, can really be linear. In this case, we had a nonlinear set of differential equations and then we locally linearized it by taking Jacobian, but in this case, we have already li linearized the characters of these elements. <coughs> we said that the, the inductance is a linear element. Why? Because then we said that the V L is equal to L d i l d t. So, if you apply, if you allow the current to change, the voltage induced will be proportional to that and the proportionality constant is L. Now, if you allow this change to happen in a certain range, then this is fine. If this range is very large, so that the inductance is driven into saturation, obviously this is wrong. Hmm? Even in air code inductors, there would be issues like the magnetic lines of force will be going through the air and linking various things and all that cannot be absolutely linear all the time. So, it is linear only in a certain range of these values V L and I L. In other words, this is also, this equation is also representing a local linear approximation in the neighborhood of the the position V L and I L 0, correct. Similar is the case with the capacitance. So, capacitance is also ideally considered a linear element with the assumption that current is C d V d t. So, if you allow the current to change within a certain range, then the voltage induced will be proportional to that. Else, uh, other things will come in. You can easily imagine if you take take a small capacitance and apply a kilo volt on it, obviously these the changes will not be linear, it will burn. So, uh, all these things are linear approximation. So, whenever you obtain a set of linear equation, you have to understand that I have already done the linearization somewhere and in most cases, you actually obtain nonlinear equations and then you do the linearization. Take the, the simplest possible example. in the in the case of the uh, simple pendulum, in the case of the simple pendulum, what was the equation? Say, if this is theta, the equation was x double dot is equal to minus g by L sin x, right? Or this is x, hmm? minus g by L sin x. So, if you now uh, write down in first order form, you would say, <coughs> x dot is equal to y and y dot is equal to 
minus g by l sin x fine so this is a nonlinear differential equation because the sign term is there what is the next step to locally linearize it by taking the jacobian so the jacobian matrix is uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 x and 0 okay so if you take cos x if you, if you if you consider the equilibrium point what is the equilibrium point here 0 0 is an equilibrium point at 0 0 if you substitute 0 at here then this term becomes 1 so at 0 and 0 this becomes 0 1 minus g by l and 0 okay so the resultant equation then is the local linear equation would be x dot is equal to y and y dot is equal to minus g by l x and this is the equation probably you have learnt in school fine so this is the equation you have learnt in school. So, this is a linear set of equation and that is a result of the local linearization from this equation. So, the point that I am trying to drive home is that you never come across linear systems in nature. All the systems that are that actually occur in nature are nonlinear, but for our own purpose we locally linearize it and then make the statement that if in case of the the uh, pendulum if the deviation from the vertical position is small then this equation is a reasonably good representation of reality okay and that's true for all systems that we talk about so if we realize that then the, the after we have understood what can happen in the in the neighborhood of the equilibrium point the next step is obviously to take a bigger look at it what happens elsewhere now what happens elsewhere means we, we our process so far was that there was an equilibrium point and we had taken a look around the equilibrium point now what can happen elsewhere if you ask this question one thing is sure that in case of a linear system the behavior everywhere in the state space is the same hmm? so if the system equations are linear you have got one set of equations and then one set of eigenvalues, one set of eigenvectors and that is what determines the behavior over the whole. But if it is a system is linear, non-linear, then obviously there is no reason to believe that the behavior here would be the same as behavior here, they could be different. Let us take an example. Let us take the example of again the simple pendulum whose equation we have derived. Hmm. Uh, just, just recall you have got, got the uh, page. I will just write down the equation because we have already derived that it was x dot y dot it was 0 1 by m l square uh, no this is already linearized no I will not write this I will write the original one q dot is equal to p by m square and p dot is equal to minus m g l sin q minus r p by m that is where we were ok. Just see we had derived this equation earlier. Hmm? So, we will start from there. In this case, what are the equilibrium points? Zero, 0 is an equilibrium point. Why? Because p is 0, q dot is 0 and then this goes 0 and then sin q with q 0 is also 0. So, p dot is 0. So, that is definitely an equilibrium point. So, 0, 0 is an equilibrium point. Anything else? 
obviously pi 0 is also in equilibrium point twice pi 0 is also in equilibrium point. So, pi 0 minus pi 0 twice pi 0 minus twice pi 0 all these are equilibrium points and there are an e infinite number of equilibrium points. Okay. So, the next question is we had done the local linearization and had obtained all that around this equilibrium point. Hmm. Is the behavior around this equilibrium point the same? Let us check that. So, what had you done? That is what I was uh, starting to write. Uh, the, the Jacobian matrix would be uh, 0, 1 by m l square minus m g l cos q and minus r by m x y fine. So, now if you substitute 0 0 if you substitute 0 0 you have this turning into 1. So, you have uh, at 0 0 you have the Jacobian matrix 0 1 by m l square this is minus m g l and this is minus r by m. Fine. And we had taken at that time the, the values and accordingly we had tried to obtain what were the values? We had taken m is equal to 0 0.5 uh, L is equal to 1, R is equal to 0 0.1 Newton second per meter and G is equal to 10. We have done this problem earlier. Hmm. Fine, remember that? Good. So, I will not do this for this particular case. What were our uh, conclusions at that time. If you substitute these values here, what did you have? You had, uh, no, you had the Jacobian matrix as 0, 2, minus 5, minus 0 0.2. Happy? And we had uh, calculated the eigen values, we found that they are complex conjugate with negative real part. So, we, we had concluded that it will be a incoming spiraling orbit, right. Okay. So, which means I will I will uh, start drawing it here. We had an equilibrium point at 0, 0 and the behavior around that was uh, a spiraling orbit, clockwise spiral or counterclockwise spiral? Clockwise, how do you decide? It is rather simple because here you would say x dot y dot is equal to this x y, fine. Take a position that is along the x direction, say a small small distance uh, away say 1 and y is 0. So, you have x dot is equal to something 0, y dot is minus 5 1 and this is 0. So, you have minus something which means y dot is minus something. So, you have a clock clockwise spiral. Okay. That is how we decided. So, around that you have a clockwise spiral, something like this. Hmm, that goes into that equilibrium point. We have decided that. Now, now uh, let us do it for the next equilibrium point pi 0. Hmm. Substitute the values here.
this was the local linearization you substitute pi 0 pi cos pi would give 0 here no minus, minus. so this is become plus right and the, the other things so substitute the values what do you get yes so uh, at pi 0 you have 0 2 this will become plus 5 minus 0 0.2 fine now obtain the eigen values should be possible to do it quite quickly do it What do you get? What, what are the values? Yes, yes, take the calculator, just calculate and tell me. So, you have understood that it is a saddle. Hmm. Minus 3.26, is that right? Fine. So, the, the eigenvalues are such. Good. Now, naturally, we have to obtain the eigenvectors along these directions. Huh. So, what are the eigenvectors? Um, well, huh? what? What Abhishek is it right? What values? Three point zero six. Not very away. So this is okay. This is okay. Fine. So, I mean, 3 may not be exactly rounded 3. Yeah. I would be happy if the numbers are so chosen that this gives round numbers so that you do not have to press calculator much. But nevertheless, let us go ahead with this. So, you have this as the eigen values, and what are the eigen vectors? Uh, give me roundabout values. I do not want to calculate exactly, that is not necessary in this case. So, you have say the equilibrium point I was marking with red here and there is another equilibrium point minus pi. Hmm. Here you have two eigen directions, probably they will be inclined more or less at 45 degrees, see check because the eigen values are almost the same with plus and minus values. What are you getting? Teja? Two, three. Two, three means uh, two, three like this. Huh? So, that is the outgoing. Huh? So, this is the outgoing one and the other incoming one will have something like this. Huh? You can easily calculate the exact slope. So, this is the incoming one, okay, like this. Uh, what? 2 and minus 3? Huh? Okay, more or less like this. Huh? Fine. So, you have these as the eigen directions at this point. So, you can easily see that the behavior around this is quite different from the behavior around that. So, at different parts of the state space, you have completely different behavior. 
that is one of the important aspects of nonlinear system you have to keep in mind that there is no there cannot may not be a global behavior so whenever you have something around a equilibrium point that doesn't mean elsewhere it will be the same you can easily see from this simple example that here it is a saddle similarly from symmetry i can also say that this will also be a saddle hmm. why why that is simple because this was the e expression of the uh, jacobian matrix so if you substitute plus pi and get something minus pi will give it the same thing so that is why i can easily see that this will also be oh sorry the blue one and in this case what will be the outgoing and incoming this So around this, around that, we know the behavior will be like this. Right? And inside the behavior is like that. And there will be another equilibrium point at twice pi, another equilibrium point at minus twice pi, so the whole structure will repeat. So, let me draw, draw just one. Huh? Now, see, uh, okay, uh, do you understand each of these cases? What is this case, this equilibrium point? When it is hanging vertically downwards, hmm? it, is, it is, uh it is oscillating like this and then the oscillation slowly dies down because there is a friction and that is what is happening here what about this yes this is when it is vertically above vertically above means it is an equilibrium point in the sense that if you release it mathematically exactly there it will remain there but physically it will not because slight perturbation will make it move but depending on the perturbation it will move. Hmm. So, that is representing that saddle equilibrium point, it is a saddle. Now, notice from here can I construct logically the character of the, of the vector field elsewhere? Notice there are some clues to it. One that vector fields cannot intersect. Uh, so, vector field lines cannot intersect we will use these as the rules. Okay. Second, it is not absolutely true that they cannot intersect, they do. For example, these are vector field lines, they have intersected, but only at an equilibrium point, where the vector itself is 0. Hmm. So, x dot is 0. Okay. The other thing is a bit subtle one, if you have we have started with equations like this right, sorry x dot is equal to some function of x. Now, if this right hand side is a smooth function, smooth function means differentiable function, then uh, x dot will also change smoothly, which means that you cannot have a sudden turn and twist in the vector. Huh? say a vector is here, the next point it cannot be like this, they will all be smoothly changing provided this is a smooth function. Hmm. So, if f x is smooth, 
the vector fields also change smoothly. As I told you, these characters are more or less similar to the character of magnetic field lines. Hmm. So, on that basis can we construct, how will the behavior elsewhere in the state space be. Notice that starting from here, what will, what will, what will happen? It will have to go on this spiral, fine. Starting from here, it will also have to go on to the spiral. If you start from here along this line, then also you will have to go into this spiral. Start from here, it will also have to go into this spiral. Hmm? So, ultimately it will go into this spiral. Start from here, well, it may or may not because it may go like this. But if the dissipation or the friction element is large, it will it may also go into and get into the spiral. What is happening? What is happening is that what is this uh, this uh, equilibrium point? This is the vertically upward position. This is vertically upward position. What is the meaning of this perturbation? What is the meaning of this perturbation? What is the meaning of that perturbation? Just try to understand. This is your x axis and this is your x dot axis x is the angle, x dot is the rate of change of the angle. So, at this point it is vertically up, give a slight perturbation this way means, means what? The starting point is slightly like this, what will happen? It will go on oscillating like this huh? and that oscillation will slowly die down and that is exactly why you have starting from here it will be. Now, what is the meaning of a point somewhere here or say here? It is exactly vertically because the x coordinate theta is pi. So, x coordinate theta is pi, but x dot is not 0, which means it has a starting. So, you you are giving a, a push in that direction. What will happen? If the friction is small, it will go on rotating for some time. Going on rotating means, means continuously the angle is changing positively, it is not oscillating, the angle is not oscillating. So, it will go like this. So, starting from here, there is a possibility that it will go like this, but if the dissipation is strong, then if the, the initial part of is small, then it will not be able to come back to this position, maybe stopping here and then go, going on like this and that will be represented by going into this, clear? The whole is the picture clear? Let me do it in a somewhat neater fashion, so that uh, you can understand it well. Here you have an equilibrium point around which the behavior is circle, oh no, not, not circle, sorry incoming spiral. Here is an equilibrium point, here is an equilibrium point plus pi 0 minus pi 0 and here there are two. Now, from here it will be like this, from here it will be like that. Hmm? Elsewhere it will be elsewhere it will be, so these are outgoing, these are incoming, yes, this is outgoing, this is incoming. Is the whole picture consistent? Nowhere were these guiding principles broken, fine. So, simply by working out the local linear behavior around the equilibrium points, we could figure out what will happen elsewhere? Seen that? Hmm. What will happen if the friction was 0? 
look at the equation if the friction is 0, this term goes to 0. Hmm. In that case, m can be ignored, we have seen that. So, if friction is 0, then the equations are x dot is equal to one by m l square y and y dot is equal to minus m g l cos cos uh, x No, 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 it's this, this, this written wrongly. Here I have written Q and here X, that is not the right thing to do. Yeah, cos X. Fine. Okay, so in this case, is it clear? we have already seen that in this case we can further simplify it by cancelling 1 L and M 1 L M. So, ultimately that can be simply written as x dot uh, y sorry x dot is equal to y and y dot is equal to minus g by L sin x. Okay. That is a uh, simple way of writing it. assume because in this case there is no role to be played by the mass. So, we do not have to take a mass assume L is 9.81 meters the result is this is 1 fine. If this is 1 the whole calculation can be done without ever pressing a calculator. So, you have you have uh, x dot is equal to y no, I will write it as the, the local linear expression x dot y dot 0 1 minus g by L sin x 0 x y. Now, we see at 0 0 this fellow is 0 this term is 1. So, the at 0 0 you have 0 1 minus 1 0. This is cos. Hmm. So, at 0 you, you, you have this 1. So, this is the, the expression what are the Eigen values? This you can do at least without pressing a calculator right. What are the Eigen values? Uh, plus minus j right. So, the Eigen values are plus minus j which means this will be perfect surface. Here and here there will still be those two equilibrium points minus pi by pi 0 and plus pi 0 at that those two points what are the this will be plus 1. Huh? If, if this is plus 1 what are the Eigen values? It will be plus 1 and minus 1 clear and the, the Eigen vectors would be exactly 45 degrees check that. Hmm. This will be outgoing and this will be incoming, this will be outgoing, this will be incoming and what will be the behavior like? Now, notice that here it is perfect surface. Hmm. Start from anywhere here, it will still be a closed curve, but not perfect surface. Why? Because now the effect of the sinusoid will be coming in. 
it will be perfect circle only in the very close neighborhood of that equilibrium point because we had approximated sin s by x that is how we got it. So, elsewhere it will be still closed loop, but not perfect circles and this is clear from the actual uh, uh, actual system because here it is this and that it is just oscillating here. And since there is no dissipation, whatever kinetic energy it loses by coming here or potential energy it loses exactly the same potential energy it gains by coming there. So, these two heights are exactly equal. So, it will be perpetually oscillating without any decay, which means that it will have to come back to the same state. That is why from our knowledge of the system, we can infer that this will be perfectly a closed loop. So, anywhere here it will be a closed loop. What happens if you start from here? If you start exactly on the eigenvector, then now what is that eigenvector? No, no, that, that is one all right, that is associated with one eigenvalue all right, but what is that physically what does it mean? It means that okay, let us consider this situation that is simpler. Here it is minus pi 0 and here it is slightly less than that which means an, an, a, a position something like this. What will happen then? It will go like this, it will go like that, it will per perpetually oscillate like that. So, which means that it will go in a loop. Start from here, which means it is vertically placed and then you give a initial push. What will happen if there is no friction? It must go like this. Fine. So, you can see that there are two different types of behavior. One type of behavior is the oscillatory behavior here. The other type of behavior is a, a, a specific type where the, th the x continuously goes on increasing. Y has an oscillation, x dot has an oscillation, but x has continuous increase. That means this fellow will go on rotating. That is when the angle goes on monotonically changing. What does it mean? These two behaviors entirely different behaviors that happen for different initial conditions. So, if you ask me what divides them, what is the condition in which slightly this way it will go this way, slightly that way it will go that way, what is the condition? That is a very unique situation because now you have to understand something more. What were these? These were the eigenvectors. The eigenvectors had what property? that if you place an initial condition on that eigenvector, it will forever remain on that eigenvector. That was the idea. Now, that idea was obtained from the linear system description and then we obtained that these, the lines with that property would be straight lines. The straight lines were the eigenvectors. But elsewhere it is linear, as you go away from it, it is a non-linear system. So, there is no reason to believe that the line with that property will still remain a straight line. So, you can visualize that the line actually gets extended, but that does not remain a straight line, but you can still conceptually figure out that if you take an initial condition on this line, I can still draw a line on which it will forever remain. That line will no longer remain a straight line, it will bend. Okay. Now, what happens is that it bends and then joins this one. This one bends and then joins this one. And that is what separates the two types of behavior. Can you see it makes an island? It makes an island inside it is the oscillatory behavior, outside it is the you know rotating behavior. An oscillatory behavior or rotating behavior in the state space is the oscillatory behavior in the actual system. A straight increase in one, one direction means a rotating behavior in the actual pendulum. So, notice here these were actually the eigenvectors, but then this fellow has started as the eigenvector, but then it has bent and gone elsewhere with the property that it is if an initial condition is placed on this, it will slowly converge on this equilibrium point, it is stable. 
Hmm. So, these have different names in nonlinear system, it is called stable manifold. And then this is the unstable manifold. So, what is the property of the stable manifold? It is that it is that line, if you place an initial condition on that line, it will uh, convert onto the equilibrium point in forward time. And what is the, the uh, character of the unstable manifold? If you place an initial condition on that, it will convert onto the equilibrium point in backward time. So, that is the unstable manifold. In forward time, it goes away from it. Clear? So, then we have the Eigen vector as nothing but the tangent to the stable manifold at the equilibrium point. This Eigen vector is the tangent to the unstable manifold at the equilibrium point. Okay. So, the stable Eigen vector is tangent to at the equilibrium point. Fine? Good. Now, this give, may give you an impression that simply by looking at the local linear neighborhoods, that is what we did. We obtained the local linear description, drew initially the behavior around that equilibrium point and then we sort of argumentatively, logically built up the vector field elsewhere. Hmm. It might give you an, an, an idea that this could be always done. So, the behavior of a linear or nonlinear system is rather simple because you can always work on the local linear things and then build up the rest. That idea is wrong. Let us re illustrate that with the help of one example. x double dot plus x minus x cube is equal to 0. Suppose your system description is this. Then how we will uh, obtain the equilibrium uh, points and go ahead? First, we will write down the first order equation will say x dot is equal to y and then y dot is equal to minus x plus ok. So, your Jacobian matrix is 0 1 this is minus 1 plus 3 x square and this is 0 ok. What are the equilibrium points? What are the equilibrium points? What? Yes, there are three equilibrium points because this is a cubic. Huh? So, equilibrium points are zero zero minus one zero and 1 0. So, substitute 0 0 here, you get 0 1 minus 1 0 and this tells you that the, the behavior will be, we have just done it, will be circle, yes. And if you put minus 1 here, you get minus 1 or plus 1 does not matter because it is square. So, you have minus 1 plus 3, you have plus 2 here, minus 0, 1, 2, 0. What is the behavior of that? Again a shadow. Hmm. So, the way we have just done, if we do the same way, we will conclude it that here it is a circle behavior 
and here these are saddle behaviors. So, there will not be infinite number of equilibrium points, but nevertheless around this it will be more or less the same, huh? the behavior will be like this. and then like this, like that and so on and so forth. Now, notice an important issue. How did you conclude that this point was a circle? You had concluded on the basis of this. So, we had substituted here, obtained 0, 1, minus 1, 0 here and its eigenvalues are perfectly imaginary. But that is true only when this x is exactly 0. Notice, if this x is 0 0.001, then this will not become minus 1. If it is not, then the eigenvalues will not become purely imaginary. It will have some real part, it will become complex conjugate, right. So, apart from exactly the equilibrium point, at no other point you can say that the behavior is exactly a, a, a circle behavior. Got the point? It is an important point. It is an important point in the sense that this will tell you that the behavior at the middle cannot be a circle. In case of the pendulum, how did we conclude? We had taken recourse to the actual system description, if there is no friction then it will be oscillating in the same way, that is why we concluded that it will come back to the same state, but here we cannot. So, if we on the basis of the eigenvalues conclude that this will be a circle that will be error. So, give some number here, small number and see what is the, the real part, negative or positive. Give a small number here, say 0 0.1, it will be a positive eigenvalue, positive real part, hmm? take that, which means actually here it will be an outgoing spiral. You get the point? So, there is a one way at least we have understood that in nonlinear system, we have to take the linear local linear description with a pinch of salt, sometimes we have to be cautious. When? because when the eigenvalues are exactly placed on the imaginary plane, imaginary axis. Have you got it? Huh? Why? Because the imaginary axis, eigenvalues being placed on the imaginary axis is something that happens with infinitely small probability. There will always be some part, some small part in the real and depending on that it will be either a converging spiral or a diverging spiral and it become exactly uh, uh, imaginary is a very very unlikely situation. So, whenever in a physical situation you get a plus minus j, j you have to be cautious is it real or has it happened because we have locally linearized it. Now, what actually happens here? If you start from, a, from initial condition very very close to that equilibrium point it will diverge all right, but diverge with a very, very slow rate, but as it goes away that rate will increase because this term will start playing its role and after some time it will find that it is really a diverging spiral. So, the behavior is actually like that, so it will diverge like this, huh? so start from here it will diverge like that. Fine, understood. So, that is one way in which we cannot say that simply by working around the equilibrium points, we can conclude about the whole be, uh, behavior. Now, let us take one important step ahead. You have say a uh, equation something like this x double dot is equal to uh, or minus mu 1 minus x square x dot plus x is equal to 0. Huh? This equation is actually called van der Poel equation.
So, in this case, how will you proceed? Again, proceed in the same way. So, we will say x dot is equal to y and y dot is equal to mu 1 minus x square x dot is y plus x fine. So, your Jacobian matrix is if you uh, 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 so, you have 0, 1, uh, the first term is minus twice x y mu, hmm. this is there minus 1 and mu 1 minus x square. Fine. Hmm. So, that is the Jacobian matrix. Are you comfortable with my, my directly writing with it? Huh? Because this is your f 2. So, this term will be the derivative of f 2 with respect to x. So, that is what I have done. Good. So, now what are the equilibrium points? Only 0, 0, there is no other, only one equilibrium point. Fine. So, there is only one equilibrium point and you substitute 0, 0 here, what have you? Hmm? 0, 0, you substitute, you have the Jacobian matrix as uh, 0, 1, minus 1 and mu, right? This goes to 0, minus 1, this goes to 0, so mu, fine. What are its equilibrium, its, its eigenvalues? What are its eigenvalues? Do it fast. This is rather simple, huh? So you have uh, mu by two plus minus. This immediately tells us that so long as mu is less than 2, it will be complex conjugate. Hmm. So, uh, let us consider mu less than 2, so that we are dealing with complex conjugate eigenvalues. Now, this tells us that as you move mu from a negative value to a positive value, mu can be some parameter, then it becomes from a incoming spiral to an outgoing spiral. Okay. So, you would notice that as mu uh, goes through 0, it will be from this to this fine. So, the system loses stability at mu is equal to 0. Hmm? It was initially stable and then it lost stability. Now, based on your linear intuition, what you to say? That it has lost stability, the system will collapse. The state will go to infinity. Right. But then, notice again, what have we done? We have locally linearized it and then on that basis, we have taken the conclusion. How can we, to, how can we say that that will apply to say this point, we cannot say because that is true only in the, in the in the close neighborhood of that. Fine. So as we go away from it, we can no longer say with confidence that whatever we concluded on the basis of this outgoing spiral that we concluded on the basis of the local linear approximation will be valid. So a, the, the the behavior was actually incoming spiral. But then on the basis of the local linear approximation, we have concluded that in the neighborhood it becomes outgoing spiral. But elsewhere, away from it, we cannot say that. Fine. So, what will happen? What will happen is something like this, very interesting, that here it will be outgoing spiral all right, but 
outside it will still remain an incoming spiral. Huh? So, the result is you can easily see that there will be some intermediate closed loop on which it has to converge. Right. If you place an initial condition inside, it will be guided by the local linear approximation and it will be followed, it will follow a outgoing spiral. Outside, it will still remain an incoming spiral and so wherever you place the initial condition, it will ultimately converge onto that orbit which is a, a closed loop. It is stable in the sense that if you part of the initial condition, it will still con come back to that uh, closed loop. This is a very special situation that can happen only in a nonlinear system. It is called a limit cycle. It is called a limit cycle. Hmm. Now, there is another name for it. For example, in a linear system, we have seen that there is a situation something like this. So, any initial condition anywhere in the state space in a linear system is then attracted to that equilibrium point. A situation something like this, where you have got all the incoming eigenvectors, real eigenvalues, then everything goes to that. Huh? Then also this equilibrium point is a stable equilibrium point and but notice the property that is starting from any initial condition is attracted to that. That is why these equilibrium points are called attractors. Hmm. These are called attractors. These attractors in a linear system can only be point attractors, points. Equilibrium points can either be attracting or repelling. So, they, these are point attractors. While in a nonlinear system, you can have a whole closed loop as an attractor. Hmm. So, this is an attracting limit cycle. Okay, we will continue with that in the next class. Thank you.